Oh man, the amount of times I've had this one requested. In the 1960s, Benfica rose to prominence under the guidance of Bella Gutmann as a successor to Real Madrid's European throne. Gutmann's maxim was that three years as a manager at one club was fatal, something Jose Mourinho is trying his hardest to live up to. As a result, despite winning two European Cups on the bounce, Gutmann departed again on his nomadic career, but not before placing a curse on Benfica. Since, Benfica have lost five European Cup or Champions League finals and three UEFA Cup or Europa League finals. Today we simply ask, what if Benfica weren't cursed? Eusebio scored, he scored again, he scored yet again before finally rounding off the 1963 European Cup final with a fourth goal against what was supposedly the pinnacle of defensive football, Benfica 4, Milan 0. If that was shocking, then the reigning European champion's failure to get out of the blocks in the following season was gobsmacking. 2-1 winners from the first leg of the last 16 against Borussia Dortmund, Benfica travelled to West Germany in high spirits. But Eusebio fired a blank, Dortmund capitalised to net three as the European Cup belatedly made its way to Italy, when Inter dispatched of both Dortmund and Real Madrid to lift the trophy. It would not be in Italy for too long though. Trips to Luxembourg and Switzerland were met with indifference by Eusebio, Jose Augusto, Torres and co before the main event took place in the quarter-final. Even though Inter lay in wait in the other half of the draw, a clash that pitted the winners of the first eight European Cups was met with fever pitch in both Lisbon and Madrid, as well as the entire continent. It did not disappoint, Eusebio grabbed a hat-trick in a 5-1 home leg of visceration that sealed the semi-final spot and Vasas in the semi-finals were a comparative breeze. The final, played at San Siro of all places, pitted the new kids on the block led by Helenio Herrera and his reigning champions of Inter against the old school of Eusebio and Benfica. The question was, who would win? The irresistible force of Benfica or the immovable object that was Inter's defence? In the first 90 minutes, the answer was neither. With 30 minutes left on the clock, the Inter backline had sufficiently tired for the great marksman to find some room in the Italian penalty area. One shot, arrowed into the top corner on 108 minutes, was all it took for Eusebio and Benfica to take glory. The Portuguese team were in their pomp, but that wasn't to mean they were automatically successful for the remainder of the decade. Their domestic form demanded another European crown to gain entry back into the competition. What they met in a Bernabeu semi-final second leg was a ferocious team hell-bent on revenge, one that craved one final dance. A 4-1 win, coupled with a triumph in the final, confirmed Real Madrid's sixth European title. The following season, Eusebio and his teammates were confined to the Fairs Cup and meekly bowed out to East German outfit Lokomotiv Leipzig. Winning their domestic title, however, returned them access to the big leagues. The best revenge over Real Madrid was to equal their six titles. Manchester United's win over Real in the semi-final ensured Benfica wouldn't close the gap against their Iberian rivals, but via a Eusebio double in a 2-1 win at Wembley. With Eusebio's advancing age came Benfica's dwindling prevalence on the continental stage, ceding control to the might of Ajax, Bayern and Liverpool in the 1970s before sporadic appearances in the 1980s. Their return to prominence came out of the blue with the domestic double of 1987 and the goals of Rui Aguayas and Mats Magnussen. That plus hurdles conquered against great teams of their time in Anderlecht and Stour completed Benfica's return to the European Cup final. It was settled on penalties thanks to Soren Lerby's miss in the shootout in Stuttgart. They'd be back to the same stage two years later. A trip to Vienna was a poignant one in 1990 for Eusebio. Before the game, a rematch of the club's third European glory against Milan, the former striker visited the grave of his former manager, Bella Gutmann. He laid flowers, wept tears of joy, and several hours later, Benfica lost their first ever continental final. They have yet to return to the pinnacle of the sport and lost each of their European finals since. They say by visiting the grave of his late manager, Eusebio had unwittingly placed a curse on his beloved club. <laughs>